Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Before I get started I just want to say I'm getting a little bit of a cold so sorry if I sound kind of funny in this video. I noticed it a little bit in my last video but I can definitely tell I'm gonna sound a little bit weird when talking so apologies for that. Today I'm going to be doing a book review of The Name of the Star by Maureen Jansen and this is the first of my Halloween reads for this month. I definitely went into this book not knowing really anything about it. I knew it was a little bit scary which is why I chose it to read this month for my Halloween reads and I knew it had something to do with Jack the Ripper which is one of the reasons why I picked it up. I kind of love stories about serial killers for some reason so I was kind of interested to see how this would go and also this is my first Maureen Johnson book so I was kind of excited to see how her writing style was and if I would enjoy it things like that but in my head what I thought I was getting was a book that took place during the time of Jack the Ripper and this girl who goes to boarding school and is in like the middle of all of this but really what happens is the takes place during modern times and this girl moves from Louisiana to England and she goes to boarding school there and there seems to be a Jack the Ripper copycat and I don't want to say too much more than that. For those of you who have read this book there's a little bit of a twist about halfway through this book which really threw me off because again I knew nothing about this book going into it so I didn't really know what to expect but then the twist really changed things. I think that made my reading experience a little bit better because I wasn't waiting for this certain event to happen. I just kind of read and then it happened. I was like, whoa, and then the story completely changes. The main character in this book is named Aurora, or Rory as she really prefers, and she's from Louisiana, like I said. One of the things I liked about her is the fact that she isn't really like a southern stereotype. It would have been really easy to take the fact that she was from Louisiana and make her really over the top. Since this is a boarding school, she, you know, lives in dorm type settings and her roommate's name is Jazza and I really like the relationship between the two of them. They become really close friends which is great and you sort of see that relationship growing. And of course there is a love interest in this story but the love interest in really the center of the story at all is really more about these murders which is nice. It's pretty obvious who the love interest is from the very beginning and it doesn't really waver from that at all. It is an insta-love which is great but at the same time I could kind of take it or leave it like I felt like it didn't really add much to the story. I really think the best parts for me were when they were trying to solve the crime and trying to solve these mysteries. This book isn't really creepy and that's coming from someone who has a very low tolerance for things that are scary so I would definitely recommend this book if you are someone who can't really handle horror type books because there's nothing really scary or jumps out at you although I will say that the murderer in this book has creepy tendencies. Like I would read this book at night and I never felt like super creeped out going to bed or anything like that. I'm going to say one thing that is kind of spoilery that I kind of have to talk about because it has to do with the twist and I feel like I can't really talk about the book properly without talking about the twist so if you don't want to know about the twist or don't want to know anything super spoilery about the book please click on the video. I will leave an annotation so you can skip ahead to the end of the video. So I was really engaged with this whole book until the twist happens and by twist I'm talking about where Rory finds out that she can see ghosts and that the murderer actually is a ghost and I feel like once that happened I was less engaged in the book. Like I said I really like serial killer stories and while this person is a serial killer it's also a ghost. I feel like I was less invested in his story and what he's about. I did want to find out who this guy was and what was going on and why he was killing people and things like that but I think once it became a ghost story I just was less interested for some reason. I don't know if I had gone into it knowing that this was a ghost story type of book if I would have had a different mindset or a different feeling about the book but that's the way things turned out because I didn't know that going in. I gave it a 4 on Goodreads but really I put it in the little description box that this is really more of like a 3.5 for me but I did round up because I did really really like the ending of this book and I won't say anything about that but anyone who read the book will know what I'm talking about and basically the ending ends in a way that it leads perfectly into a sequel which is coming out I believe next year. I definitely will be picking up the sequel because I did enjoy this story a lot and I like these characters and I like the potential of where this is leading if my guess about the ending is correct. I definitely would rate it 3.5 and but I feel like it deserves to be rounded up based on the ending alone and I think it was a really smart way to 
set this book up for a sequel and it's not that this book ends on a cliffhanger in any way like the story is completely resolved but they show how there can be more books in the future. Let me know what you guys think if you have read the book. You know, feel free to leave your comments down below about your thoughts and opinions on it. If you guys are planning on picking up the sequel when it comes out. Or if you guys have read other Maureen Johnson books, feel free to leave comments about what you guys think of those below. This was my first one, so let me know how this compares in your opinion to other Maureen Johnson books if you've read more than one of her books. Just one final reminder, um, my giveaway ends this weekend and I'll be drawing the name on Sunday. If you wanted to enter that, you must do it, you know, this weekend. I'll leave a link down below and an annotation on the screen for you guys to go check out that video. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Like I said, I really enjoy super superheroes. I do like superheroes.